Okay, now when I'm doing the circle tool, like I just did here, I don't have control. You can see if I click on this, you know, I, I have my, my endpoint, which is I can put right here. But you can see how that jumps. I don't have a lot of control over where things start and stop with this. It's, it's almost automated. See? See how those points are moving around? Yes. Okay, so I'm never going to really get a good motif yeah. this way. I can't control it. It's not as predictable as what I think it should be. See how that triangle keeps moving? So but, you would have... Oh, go ahead. You take, your, you take your little scissors and snip that. You would, jump. or you could do this. You can use your manual punching tool. This tool is not going to give you what you want necessarily. Um, this one's probably better than this. This is your complex fill. This right. is your turning angle. So I could actually use the turning angle tool. And I could say, you know what? Right click, move it over a little bit, right click again. Because remember, if you right click, it curves. I started on this side, so I go back to this side, right click, and then come over to this. And if I hold the control key, I'm going to get that straight again, right? It'll kind of snap to. Right click, and then come down here. And because I'm right clicking, once I start placing these points, see what's happening? Mm -hmm. And there's my circle. Let me select it, shrink it down to size. And I'll, I'll put on the, the glasses again so you can see. Okay, there is my circle. Now, what I have if I go into my reshape is the ability, see where my in and out points are? I actually get to move these points now. I have the ability to move these around. I can move my out point here or here. I can move this over to here. Um, you know, or I could leave them where they are depending on what you want. So I'm going to go ahead and just move them like this. Okay, so I'm starting here and I'm ending here. That makes it so much easier to select this, go into embroidery, make motif, and I'm going to select the folder I want to save it in. I'll just name it Dotto one again. Okay, now it's going to, you know, I still have to tell it which way it's going. Well, I know that, you know, my endpoints over here, my outpoints over here, because I moved them there, right? There you go. Dotto one has been created. So let me select this. Go back and change it. Dotto one. Um, I'll move this. I'm going to make this bigger just so you can see. Okay, now let me go out of. 3D view. Now what I've got is the jump in between is a straight line. If I want to get rid of that jump completely, I can do something else here. Here's my out point. All right, see the little, you know, out point here. If I want to, you know, not have a jump at all, I can put a little run line in here if I want space between them. Oh, hold on. I always forget when something's selected not to click like that. All right, ready? So, you know, how long does this, you know, do I want this line to be? Well, you know, maybe I want them spaced this far apart. Okay, now I'm going to left, get out of my tools, go to select, left click and drag around both of these pieces, and go up to embroidery and make motif. Let me go back down. I'm just going to rename this. I'll name this one dot O2. And let me zoom back out. We'll make a new line. Okay, so here's my line. And I'll go select dot O2. I did save that, didn't I? No, you know what? I didn't. I forgot to tell it the direction. Don't do what I just did, ladies. <laughs> Hold on. Let me go back. I forgot to tell it directions. All right. Make motif.
Okay, so dot oh two is there. Now I can go back and and change this. Okay, there's dot oh two. Now I'm just gonna not. I'll make this seven point two seven since I don't need them to be separated. See what I've done? Mm -hmm. So now what I've got is no jump. I'm going to have a little stitch in between there. But that little stitch, depending on the direction of your fabric, for the most part, you're not even going to really notice. You know, I certainly, mm -hmm. even with this, I'm not real sure I'd be cl clipping any threads. The difference is this will sink into your fabric more. Okay, does the motif thing make sense to you guys? Yes. Okay, you understand how to make the motifs now and that you can do them in multiple parts? Yep. I have to put it on. I have to get both computers and put yours on in one and then mine on this one and I can sit and play. Okay. Stop yours <laughs> and watch it. All right, Yay. now... I'm going to explain how to make um, this stitch up here, okay? And this stitch here, you know, you already have that in there, but I'm going to explain why these holes look so much better. I should have used probably a smaller needle or made this a little less wide, and then I wouldn't have had, um, that stitch is actually in the hole. Okay, and I'll explain why that shifted like that because it's something that you have to know when you digitize. Okay, so now what I did was I used my grid. Now you can keep the grid at this size if you want or you can shrink your grid. It doesn't make much difference because you can resize the pattern. So if you're comfortable with your grid at this size, great. If you want to, you know, change it. Then you can go into View, Grid. I'm trying to remember where that's at now. It might be in your Setup. Yeah, Setup. Work Environment. Mm -hmm. And Grid. So you can change the size of the grid. 10 millimeters is a decent size, but you can take this down all the way down to 2 millimeters. Okay? I'm going to leave us at 10 because it doesn't really make much difference. So what I did was I used the running tool. So when I use the running tool, just the plain running tool, I don't want any of these specialty lines. I want none of these specialty lines. I just want the regular single run line because I know what it's going to do. The goal is to punch a hole in the middle. That's where I really want that hole to be punched, right? So. Right. I'm going to start in the middle. I'm going to place my first click right on this grid. Left click because everything's straight. And then I'm going to hold my control key. Okay, so I've got the control key held. And what that does, if you notice, it kind of keeps things straight. It's not necessarily snapped to, but it keeps it straight. So I'm going to place a left click, come back to the center, left click on that. Okay, I want to make like a snowflake effect, so I'm going to go about halfway, left click. You know what, I told you wrong. Hold on, let me backspace. Sorry, I'm going to start in the center, and I'm going to go about out to here, and I'll explain why that was wrong. Hold your control key, go about halfway, and then just hold the control key down and come back, and what you're going to get are very straight lines, and you're going to try to match where you went into as close as you can. Okay, and even on the sides, I want to go out about halfway to make, you know, really kind of a snowflakey effect or a more rounded effect, I guess, than in these angles. Okay, now I could leave that there or I could come back and go forward, but that's going to make a very big hole here. Okay, so I hit enter. Mm -hmm. I could do this two ways. I could not start in the center, but I really kind of want that pull. And this line's not going to be nearly as important as this line at starting that pull. But you can see I'm pretty dead centered here, right? 
on, you know, that right. where I hit all those stitches. And that's because I held the control key. But I'm going to zoom in and show you that I'm not nearly as perfectly centered as you think on this. See? Let me zoom in even closer. See? I'm not mm -hmm. perfectly centered. That, wow. I'm at 4,000 zoom. Now, if I want to be really picky about this section, be picky. But the other sections, don't be so picky about. If I want to reshape this, I go in and I hit reshape. See all those little nodes? What I want are all yeah. these little nodes. Like this is my first one, right? That's my start point. So I can pull that little node over. I can pull this little node over. And I can be really picky anal about this, right? And get all those nodes dead center. Right. That will give me a beautiful, 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 beautiful hole in the middle. And I just keep moving these nodes until they're on top of each other. And then put my start point back there. Okay, now let me zoom out because I am at 4,000, almost, you know, 4,500 plus zoom here. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And let's go back to our select. Okay, so it looks pretty much the same when you're at 150%, right? But now that I know that that center is perfect, I'm going to have a really nice hole there. I'm not going to be quite as picky about these because I don't really want the dramatic hole there. I want the dramatic hole here, right? So if these are off a little bit, it's not going to make much right. difference. Okay, now, this motif is quite large, so I'm going to have it selected. I'm going to go into my settings. And what I'm going to do, this is a single run line, correct? I'm going to make this like 10, right. which is very, very long. But I want it to be very long um, because I don't want any stitches in here. I just want a jump over. Then I'm going to go to dimensions. And I'm going to make it like 5 millimeters. Okay, and I'm going to show you what happens. Even though I use the run stitch, I'm going to show you what happens. And I'm going to zoom in and go to 3D. There are no drop stitches here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have the most beautiful hole in the middle of this. Okay, so I've got that made. Now I've got it selected and, um, with the black boxes, right? And I know I start in the right. middle and I go here. So, you know, what's going to happen is it's going to go here. I'm going to jump over to the middle. So I might want to change that, but we'll leave it as is for right now. I might want to start here, jump in the center, but, you know, we'll play with it a little bit. Um. I'm going to go in and I'm going to say embroidery, make motif, and I put it in my wing needles. So I put, you know, 01 wing. And I think I already have this, so it's going to replace it. So I'm going to say, okay, yeah, overwrite it. I'm going to start here, and I'm going to end over here. Okay, now what's going to happen when I make this line go down to 100%. When I make a line, now what's going to happen, and I pick that design, <laughs> I'm going to get exactly what I created. There's my wing needle because I just made that. There's my wing needle one. See how everything's lining up the way I want it? And you, mm -hmm. you can just picture the beautiful hole that's going to be there, right? <laughs> And some, you know what, my program, I don't know if my program's still in this because I'm on the webinar or um, what, but, you know, there's my wing needle. Okay. There we go. Let me go out of this and there we go. There's my design. So, and I can stretch this. Like, if I don't think Beautiful. that looks quite how I want, you know, I can stretch this thing around, right? Like, maybe you want something like this.
I could stretch that and make it a motif, or I could just come in here. If I stretch that, I'm going to have to increase the stitch length, and you can see what's happening, right? I've got like this little double thing going on, and I've stretched all of that out of place, right? Or you could go, right. and you can just stretch out your motif line. And, you know, it may cause the same problem. It may not. You know, maybe you want, well, I guess you can't really stretch it out on this one. Um, I like it just like it is. Yeah, it's really pretty like it is. So you're going to have to, if you want to stretch it out like this, you're going to have to edit it or make it like that. So, all right. So there is my nice little wing needle, you know, little daisy thing going on. Okay, now this is where things get really interesting with the motifs. Uh, well, I guess, you know what, before I go on, let me double check with Shirley. Do you have any questions, Shirley? Okay, so what I can do with the motifs, you saw I could put the circle together, and then I could put, like, the little line, right? And so that was, those were two pieces. Well, what I can do with the motifs is I could actually me undo, undo, so I can get back to my regular shape here. Okay, so there's my nice little, you know, daisy, right? Or my nice little snowflakey kind of, you know, eyelet kind of thing, right? I could say, you know what, really, I want to add something else to this. I could make my own pattern. Or I could come over to this gallery and say, you know, I like that, but I really, let's add, you know, something else to that. Um, let's add the one stitch that wasn't too, too, you know, bad on a wing needle and give it a little extra texture. I think we'll just do, let me go down to the diamonds. There's a diamond. There it is. We'll try this one. Okay, see that little dot? That's where I start and that's where I end. Those are the points that I created in this over here. So I can go left click, left click. I can put a couple diamonds in here. Of course, I wouldn't want to necessarily do the wing needle then. And so I can make this whole pattern now a motif. I can say, you know what, let's go to embroidery, make motif. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll put it in the digi classes. Combo one. Okay. Start my combo here and my combo over here. It's been created. Now I'm going to go show you what that does. I wouldn't necessarily want to use a wing needle if I did the satin stitching like this. But you'll understand the, the logic in a minute. So if I go over here and I say, you know, let's select the combos, digi classes, and then combo one, right? See what I've got going on now? Pretty. Mm -hmm. wow. And I, I can do this with you know, big things, too. It doesn't have to be little things. Like, I could make big things, like, you know, big daisies. Um, I'm just going to kind of grab some things out of here because there's some interesting little things in here. Hmm. Let me grab something. This is. These are just little quick patterns. Like, these daisies here are pretty good size when you really look at them, right? Well, maybe you want to do something like this. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't particularly use this pattern, just so you guys know, because it's going to have some jumps in it. But, you know, I could really make something, let me flip that back around, I could make something big like this, and I can do it in multicolors, but I will tell you, if you do multicolor on this, what's going to happen is you're going to have a bunch of thread color changes. Like if I made these leaves green and these flowers pink, I would have to change colors all the time. There's no way to in particular color sort it over much. But if you're going to make entredeaux, you, <coughs> you could use white thread. You could use white thread. If you're going to do, you know, heirloom sewing, yeah. you're going to use pink or you're going to use baby blue or you're going to use yellow or you're going to use white if you're going to put it on like a netting, you know, like a net base, right? But the point is, I can take this giant pattern 
and I can turn it into um, one motif. So the next time I say, hey, make a motif, it's going to give me this in a line. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the potential is really quite unlimited with what you could do. So do you guys have any questions at all on this? You guys good? We're good. <clears throat> okay, so I'm good. Your homework is going to be to make up a little wing needle design and I want you to make up a motif that's more complicated. You know, it, don't worry about it stitching perfectly, but something to think about. Remember I told you that, you know, this kind of bothers me because I know that some of these have jumps in them. Well, um, if you pull one of the motifs out, see all those little teeny tiny pieces? They're all grouped together. Uh -huh. If I go out of yeah. 3D and I zoom in on some of these motifs, you can see the jump stitches in them. This one's pretty good, but there are a couple in there that you're going to want to really look at. Um, trying to think of which ones. I think the leaves are one of them. Like, if you use them by themselves, like with this little embroidery gallery option, they're not always that bad. But if you try to use them in a line, you end up running into some problems with them because of the way they were digitized. You know, they weren't, these were intended to be, you know, quick little grab it kind of things, right? But some of these, you know, were intended to be motifs. It might be this one. I was just kind of surprised, you know, I made a line and I ended up with jump stitches and, uh, you know, I, I wasn't expecting it, I guess. It's this one. This is one of them. Okay, so here's one, right? And, you know, I can come in here and I can see where my that little X is. You know, that's the end, right? So I could, you would think logically it would start, but you see that jump line already there? So I've got jumps. I've got, you know, a jump mm -hmm. there. You know, if I have, don't think about it and I come over here and I say, oh, hey, make this one go this way, right? See my jump right there? Right. So, yeah. you know, it, you have control when you make your own motif to control those in and out points. So that's something to think about. Remember when I was making sure I knew where the in and out points were on this? Well, you know, if I would do something like a flower, um, I'm going to grab this real quick. If I did, you know, something like a flower like this, I'm just going to make little petals real quick because, you know, that's kind of standard in heirloom. Okay, so there's my little petal, and you guys know I hate doing things multiple times. I started here and I ended here. But, well, you know, I started here, bear that in mind, and I ended here. So if I would take this, well, let me get out of that. If I would take this petal, um, go up to edit and duplicate it, which put it right on top. Let me get rid of all the rest of the stuff so you can see what's going on. Okay. See my, my little petals I'm making? Okay, petal one, petal two, right? I'm going to kind of zoom in around this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's petal one, petal two. Let me go ahead and select petal two. If I left click on it, I get black boxes. If I left click a second time, I get the clear boxes in that little dot right there. Remember how we moved it and then we used that as our pivot point? Right? Okay, now, see my right. jump my jump stitch from here to here? See the jump stitch? Yes. You guys see right. that? It's because yeah. my in points here and my out points here. So, therefore, my in points here, my out points here. So, if I wanted to make sure I did this right, do your in and out points. Let me get rid of this other piece and redo it. And control your in and out points on your motifs so that, you know, you have what you want, right? <coughs> this way, you know, you know exactly where things are going to go. I know that that's all coming to the center, right? And, you know, I could uh -huh. let me duplicate these. and pivot those around. So, you know, I need to control where those in and out points are and 
you know, right now my out point's down here. Well, if I'm moving on to the next flower, okay, then, you know, I'm going to move this in and out point. Mm -hmm. Like if I want to make a line, I'm going to start here, you know, and end here. Does that make sense? Remember I moved my, my in and out point here? Right. But if I want to connect these, you know, think about where you need to start. There's my out point. That's my in point. So I'm going to connect these in a motif. Then I'm going to have to make some changes to where things start and where they end so that I can control, you know, what's going on. Okay, there's my end. There's my start. That one's good. I'll put my end here. Okay, so you guys know I'm starting up here on this whole run, right? I'm starting up here and ending. I start here, remember, mm -hmm. and I end here. Now, here's the logic. Let me um, go into embroidery and make a motif. Combo two. I tell it that it starts here, and I tell it that it ends here. Okay, so now what I've done is make sure that I don't have a bunch of jump stitches, especially on a more complicated, um, you know, motif like this. And it's going to be somewhat the same. See how I'm overlapping? I would spread these apart a little bit more, but I don't have a jump stitch. I'm not sure why it does. I guess because it's so big, but let's go ahead and say okay. I'm overlapping still, but I don't have, you can see I'm not having massive, well, I guess I am, I'm jumping the wrong way, hold on. No, I'm not, that's just a line. Okay, see there's no jump from here over to here or anything like that, right? I am running into each other mm -hmm. without a jump. Let me spread these apart. Okay, see where my jump goes from here to here? when I spread those apart. So they're uh -huh. just running into each other. I, I'm eliminating a whole lot of work for myself. So make sure you know where your design starts and where it where ends. It is. So does that make sense to you guys on? And you can see, I mean, look how simple that was to make. Really, when you come down to brass tacks, that's pretty much, you know, like a little heirloom design, right? Well, would you hurry up and get loose and let us have the video so we can get started? <laughs> well, no, i got to show you some more stuff. <laughs> oh, all right. It's 10 minutes to 10. I know. We got started a little bit late. But, okay, so, you know, you can see how simple that was to make an heirloom design, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is at standard density. Heirloom fabric, if you're going to do this on cotton, you're not going to have any problems. But heirloom fabric is very thin. Batiste is very thin. So what you're going to want to remember to do when you make your motif, you're going to want to remember to check your settings. You know, I don't necessarily, you know what, let me get out of that and go back. Okay, this is my motif. When I make it, I want to double check some things. I don't need 8 bazillion pounds of underlay if it's going to be small. That stitch length of 2 is very short. <laughs> Bump it up to 2.5. <coughs> Edge run, if you're going to do satin, is probably a good idea because it gives the satin stitching something to kind of wrap around, to wrap over. But the key is how much density do you want? So you can see the percentage here, right? Don't panic if you go all the way down to like, you know, 70%. See the difference? Let me zoom in so you can see a little bit better. See the difference in the density? Don't mm -hmm. think that that is not dense enough. Do a test stitch. Even if you just stitch out this little teeny tiny motif, do a test stitch. Okay, and... and Figure out what density you need because you don't want, you know, the worst thing that would happen is you make this beautiful motif, you slap it on your fabric, and it eats it. You know, so you're going to have to adjust the density. Think in terms of gentle and thin. Um, the other thing you might want to look at is 
you're going to use some rayon because you like the sheen or maybe some poly for you know the the flower parts the entredeau you might use cotton for and there are different weights of cotton there's a 60 weight which is very very thin and it's a nice weight there's a 50 weight which is you know pretty reasonable that's what I used in my samples the 60 weight is going to give me a little more delicate touch um, you can get that from signature and it comes in a bunch of colors and then there's like 40 weight the 40 weight if this is my 60 weight or my 50 weight right here you know that that 40 weight is going to be a little beefier than maybe I want. It's not quite the same. Cotton's not going to behave quite the same as your embroidery thread does. So just bear that in mind as well. As your what what thread? As your embroidery thread. That embroidery cotton thread's thread. going to behave a little differently than your embroidery thread. So but you, but go ahead. You know, so just bear that in mind. And always do a test what, stitch. What, you is, know. what is your preference? Um, 50 you know, I've got 50 weight, which is what I used here, okay? Cotton. The 40 weight, yeah, or the 60 weight cotton is just really a nicer, you know, there's heirloom cotton as well, right? It's it's mercurized, it's a little shinier, um, and it, I think it sits somewhere between 50 and 60 weight. 60 weight's fairly thin, but, you know, this is, you know, this is gentle fabric, right? You don't want to overwhelm it with thread. You don't want to overwhelm it with, um, you know, too many stitches. So do a test stitch. Find a thread that you like that gives you the results that you want. Cotton is definitely going to behave different than rayon or polyester. All right. Oh. No more yawning. Well, you ate I soup. It. I don't even want to hear it. Um, Shirley's good. Okay. All right. So before I let you go, um, what is your homework, Nancy? I'll ask Nancy. And Barbara, you can answer too, Barbara. We are going to make... Okay, uh, we have to do a wing needle design. Uh-huh. And a more complicated design. Right, motifs. motifs. Right, you have to make some motifs. Now, before I show you a couple motifs, I want to talk to you a little bit about the French knots in the program. These are built in. This is the default setting. Do not use a wing needle with these. This is your French knot when you forget to take the wing needle out of your machine. See how it just kind of eats and sinks? <laughs> so this is the default size. So when I talked about making some of your own Swiss dot, you really could do that. No, you're not going to cut every little pattern in between here or every little line unless, of course, you make these far enough apart, right? But, you know, this is, this is mm -hmm. I think, 3, this is 3.5, this is 4, this is 4.5, and they start losing their charm somewhere between 4, 4.5, and 5, right? The default, Which size do you like? Uh, you know, I, I actually like the default size at 3. Don't go any smaller than 3. Okay? I like those big ones down below. Well, if you like the big ones, you can use the big ones. But see, to me, if I want to do something like this, let me go back to here. If I want to do something like uh, pretend I, I'm making like Swiss dot, but I don't really want like a whole fabric full of Swiss dots. You know, I could do something like, I think I can do this. Let's double check. Um, okay, let me use this. See if I can get to my French knots in the motifs, if I use a motif fill. Motif fill. I think the French, there's actually a French knot down here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to make that my current. Okay, that's a little bit open. It's at 6. So if I put this at 3, you know, 3. And I'm going to space these. I'll space these pretty far apart. Um, you can also play with your layouts, too. See how I've got these little blue things, and I can move them around. So I can play with my layouts and stagger these dots so they don't look quite so um, uniform. 
Okay, so there's my dots. If I want to do something like this, now we're starting to echo. Wow, I am having a day. You know, say I'm making like a little area, I'm pretending that I have Swiss dot, and this is not going to be perfect, but see, I can get those, I would clip in between those, but I could, you know, I could put those in there and, and make it look a little, I probably wouldn't want to cut all of those, but I could make a like faux Swiss dot in sections, right? Let me hit the layout again and see if I can stagger mm -hmm. those a little bit more. Okay, see if that's a little different. I could even make them further apart if I wanted to. But, you know, that's going to be something that would be kind of fun to fill in a little area with, a little bit of texture, right? <coughs> Sorry. Okay, mm -hmm. um, I'll kind of rush you towards the end. Next week we're going to do entregot, and we're going to look at doing those, those you know, verdure and glaze designs. But something to think about. When, you know, the one fill, let me get back to my pictures here. The one fill I did that, okay, see this fill? When I'm doing like a heart shape, mm -hmm. you know, I would want to fill with something if I want to do like a wing needle design. This is what I did with that because the diamond in there just didn't do what I wanted it to do. So I made my own diamond out of motif and I used this again. It's going to be the same concept. I'm starting here, you know, making my diamond, going back, coming back. And somewhere in here, I'm going to have a triple line. That's okay. Just hit those corners. You know to zoom in and double check the corners, right? Oops. You can backspace if you make a mistake, too. So go in here and back. And I did that really fast, so I can tell you right now those points aren't lining up. Those points, all of them, you are going to want to line up because, see, I'm way off. But you want these points to line up so that you get a nice holy fill like this. And you can use that fill. I want to explain a fill just a little bit to you so you can kind of see how to adjust um, before I let you go. Okay, so if I'm doing a fill, let me kind of clean off some of these because I've already got that pattern saved. So um, if I'm doing a fill, here's my fill tool. And maybe I'm doing a heart. So let's see if I can freehand a heart here pretty good. Might be a funky looking heart, but yeah, it's going to be pretty funky looking. I should have put uh, another point in there. Okay, this is my heart. Let me go in and I'm going to show you how to adjust those because you're going to have to play with these a little bit. And I'm going to go to a different gallery. I'm going to go to my wing needle. And it's just a little diamond. That's that little diamond shape I made, right? Mm -hmm. And wow, I did that one so, so nice and neat. <laughs> um, in the layout, I'm going to want to make sure that those lay out properly. Let me go back in. And I'm going to want to adjust it because these fills have to touch. Um, I probably would go back and just reset everything, but that's where the spacing comes in. See where this layout is? I'm going to go back to layout and I'm going to zoom. You can zoom in at any time. These have to, because I was playing with that layout, what the problem. See these squares here? These move things around. See how I'm able to move things around here? And what that does is it kind of tells it to start lining up properly. And I didn't do it exactly perfect, but you guys get the idea, right? Everything's touching now. And see the difference? Yes. Okay, now, sometimes oh, yeah. this won't fill properly. Sometimes you'll have, like, gaps. You know, well, if that happens, go into your reshape and reshape a little bit. You can left-click to add straight points. And you can right-click to add more curves. Okay, but see, sometimes it just won't fill in quite the way you want. The other option, if you can't get it to fill the way you want, 
is to change the size just a little bit and that will adjust it. This actually filled in pretty good. I have a spot up here, but I'm not going to worry about that because I would be, you know, covering this edge anyway. So, do you guys have any questions? Shirley, you good? I'm good. Okay, so you guys are going to make some motifs for me. You're going to... You're going to be so impressed with mine. See? And you're going to make some wing needle designs, <laughs> right? Because some wing needle patterns. Color. Right. And you're going to do a little test stitch on them. Right. Yes, and then we're going to send them to you. We're going to take a picture of them and send them to you. Right. When you go to log into the website to view the video, there is a page, and it says you can attach your files to it and send them to me. So if you have any questions, go to that, you know, login. If you don't know your login, email me. But you should be able to attach your files. And if you have any questions, it's always easier if you attach your files there so I can look at them. When you save this, if you want to edit this later, go to File, Save As, and save it as a JAN file. If you save it as a format file like Jeff, then it's it not editable. You know, it's you at that point a stitch pattern, and it's not an outline pattern. So, okay, so I'm going to give you your homework assignment, and then we will see you. I'll actually be in Chicago, so you get to have a webinar with me in Chicago next week. How's that? You get to go to Chicago. Oh, cool. Oh, trust me, I'm not real thrilled about it. We're going to the, the uh, Schomburg event. I'm thrilled about that, right? But... We're paranoid about bed bugs because Chicago has a huge bed bug outbreak. Are you going to um, go check on the folks at Elna? They're not there anymore. Oh, okay. I do have to tell you guys something. Let me go ahead and I'm going to stop recording now. Um,